happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Won't you stand with us in worship this morning? Lift up your voices and lift high your praise. Join with the heavens declaring the wonders of his faithfulness. the hope of the world the savior has risen the spirit has come to bring us into love i 
so grateful to come into your presence this morning. We are so aware that you are here when we're gathered in your presence and in your name. So Spirit of God, fill this house. Fill this place, Holy Spirit. Because there's some in this room, Lord, who've had the best week they've had in years. And we want to be sure that we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for your goodness and your mercies that never fail us. We know there are others that are in this room or watching on the internet, Lord, that have had the most devastating week and their pain and shame and hurt has filled their lives. We know you're the answer for the dark days, Lord. We know you come in when everyone else runs out. We know your presence and your power is available to heal and to encourage and to lift us. So, Father, wherever our spiritual state is at this moment, we're grateful that you're everything we need. You're our strength. You're our hope. You're our help. You're our healer, Lord. So we spend another 30 seconds, Lord, just lifting our voices, lifting our hearts, and say, thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, for your word, your power, your presence your strength, your grace, your anointing that breaks every yoke in our lives and sets us free from every bondage and every captivity. Minister to your people today, Lord. Encourage the life of every mother and every grandmother in this place, every man, every teenager, Lord, every heart that's tuning your, their hearts towards yours, Lord. Meet us today, and when we leave this place, we'll be able to say it was so good to be in the house of prayer today. We thank you and we praise you for it. In the name of Jesus, let everybody say amen and amen. Before we do anything else, turn to the screens and make this your confession today. I am a believer. I believe in Almighty God the Father, the creator of all there is. I believe in Jesus Christ the Lord, God's only Son, born of a virgin womb. I believe Christ died for me, returned to life, rose to heaven, and is coming back to earth again. I believe in the Holy Spirit and his power to help me be like Christ and do his work. I believe in the Bible, God's holy word, and all his promises to me of abundance and eternal life. I believe in the church, God's forever family. I am the righteousness of God in Christ because I am washed in the blood of the Lamb, filled with His Spirit, happy, holy, forgiven, and free, 
I am greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved. I am a believer. Can you say amen? Before you're seated, turn around and shake hands or hug a neck of give a high five to somebody. Say, God bless you. Glad you're in the house of the Lord today. Praise the name of Jesus. We'd like to take just 30 seconds in every Sunday morning service to explain to you our growth track, what it's all about to become a part of the family of God here at Revive. We have a four-track growth track. It goes like this, belong, believe, become, build. You're doing the first step. That is meeting God here, becoming part of the family of God here at Revive on a Sunday morning. Believe, that means experience the word. Build on your faith by, by coming out to our small group studies, women's group, men's group, Wednesday morning, Wednesday evening, Faith Academy on Sunday morning. Small group, classroom settings where you can get to know people, share the word of God, and grow your faith together. The third step is become. That's learn discipleship, and that includes membership, maturity, and ministry. And the last step is build, engage in ministry, Become one of our partners in ministry here at Revive Building a Legacy for God's Kingdom. We're grateful for that. We want to welcome our guests today. If you're here on Mother's Day for the first time, we welcome you and pray that God blesses you. Pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit lifts you and you leave stronger than you came in. We have a gift for you. It's, called, it's a book called The Champion Life, Improving Your Way to Success. I wrote this book because I believe God believes in you. You need to believe in you, and you need your best days to be ahead of you. This is your book if you're visiting with us. Fill it out. Fill out a Connect card. Give it to us at the coffee bar or at the Connect Center after the service. We'll give you this book to take home for you. It's time to receive your morning offering. God bless you for being faithful, honoring the Lord with your gifts, your tithes and offerings. If you're watching online, you love what this church stands for, you'd like to be a part of the support for this ministry, you can give online, reviveusa.net forward slash give, reviveusa.net forward slash give. If you'd like to text to give, some of us are texting to give, you can do that at 84321, make sure you find revive, 84321, you can give one time, multiple times, a recurring gift to bless this church. Thank God for the anointing that's here. Thank God the anointing is increasing. The water of life is free. Can you say amen? I said the water of life is free. Then why do we take offerings? Because the plumbing costs a few dollars, right? To get the gospel around the world, to get the gospel into our community, to pay for the lights and the heat and everything good that God has allowed us to do, it depends upon your faithfulness. But God has partnered with us. He said if you will tithe, if you will give, if you will bless he will open the windows of heaven and pour out more blessing than we're able to receive. Many of us are living testimonies of decades of God's faithfulness to us. We don't deserve it. That's just the kind of heavenly Father He is. We give, and He gives back to us. Let me pray over your gift right now. Father God, we are grateful, thankful for another opportunity to worship You with tithes and offerings and gifts. We ask, Lord, that You would bless this church. Continue to help us to increase our mission support around the world, Lord, so that we can bless our missionaries in Israel, in Asia, in Africa, and in Europe, Lord, in South America, so that we can do more in this city to rescue the perishing, to care for the dying, to lift up the downtrodden. Bless every gift and giver now. Be honored by the heart in which we give cheerfully to the name of Christ. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. As you give to the Lord today, praise God. We are so delighted every time we get to um, introduce somebody new in our family at Revive. As I said a few moments ago, we take every month, we have a membership class for those who want to be a part of this church. And it's my honor today to introduce you to your sister in Christ, the newest member at Revive, Tabitha Reuter. Would you come up, please? And would you welcome her? Hallelujah. We are so delighted that Tabitha has joined our family of, of God here at Revive Now. What does it mean to become a member? A member is, says, I don't want to just be a spectator, okay? I don't want to be somebody who just watches. 
I don't want to be somebody who just consumes ministry. I want to become a partner with this ministry. And do you know what that does to a pastor's heart? <laughs> when somebody says, I want to partner with this ministry. I believe in what God is doing here. I believe in what you're preaching. I believe in the doctrine and the teaching. And I want to be a part of that. So we want to celebrate Tabitha Ruder. And uh, she comes from Cincinnati. Cincinnati? Oh, bless God. Sometimes my memory works. And it did that time. It comes, <laughs> hallelujah. Um, some, she comes from Cincinnati. She's got family back there. So unless God moves all of her family here, we won't see her forever here. But for the next couple of years, she's an executive in leadership with Procter & Gamble Warehouse in Edwardsville. Very responsible position there. But um, if you don't see her, she's in Cincinnati. If you do see her, she's working here. So we're grateful for her. Would you just stand? Because the Word of God says in our mouth there's the power to bless or curse. And right now we're going to bless Tabitha. Pastor Valerie, if you would join me. We're going to bless her and pray that God anoints her and, and enables her to be such a witness and a light of the gospel in her job here, in her home here in Ed Edwardsville. Maryville. Whoa, she lives in Maryville. Great town, great town to live in. We live there too. God will bless and anoint her and uh, use her mightily to affect and uh, impact our church as well. Just stretch your hand a blessing. Father, we thank you for Tabitha. Lord, we, in the name of Jesus, we recognize the gift that it is when someone says, I want to be a partner, I want to be a member, I want to be a supporter and an encourager of the ministry called Revive. Lord, you know the desires of her heart. You know the prayers on her heart, Lord. And I pray now in the name of Jesus in this next season, even over this summer and coming fall, Lord, that you will do a series of miracles, Lord, in her life, in her ministry, in her family, Lord, everything she's believing for, Lord, those quiet prayers, those visions, Lord, in her heart, those ministry gifts and callings, Lord, will be arisen in her heart, and she will see supernatural things, Lord. I pray her the blessing of God upon her financially, physically, Lord, spiritually, emotionally, every area of your life, Lord. May, may her connection with his church bring her blessing just as she is already bringing us blessing. We thank you. We praise you for this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. Praise God. Important news, Tabitha is a mother and about to be a grandma. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. You may be seated. Speaking about mothers and grandmothers, um, we've got a video we want to show you right now produced by Ashley and uh, our children's ministry and your kids. Let's watch this. She's always nice to me. She takes care of me. She's amazing. Ten years old. Um, four. Seventy-three. I play with her and um, spend time with her. Watch movies. I play with her. Um, play with her. Yeah, well, I love you, Mom. 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 We do love you, Mom, even if we get your age just, just a little bit wrong or several decades wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. A mother's heart. A mother's heart is the most amazing substance on the planet. Think about it. It's a mysterious substance made of elements that you really can't find in the cosmos, because a mother's heart is so soft. It is so soft that it can be as tough as nails and as strong as a mountain. A mother's heart is expandable to any size. It can fit one or two or 12, and then you bring grandchildren, and it's Limitless in its expandability, but 
it never loses its consistency. Mother's heart can be bruised, can be broken, can be shattered, but it keeps on beating. A mother's heart can be ignored, forgotten, left out in the cold, but it stays warm. A mother's heart, and this is mysterious, but you know it's true, a mother's heart can be sad and happy at the exact same moment. A mother's heart can be as gentle as a soft rain or as fierce as a lion defending her cubs. How do you explain the heart of a mother? I think the only way you can explain a mother's heart is perhaps understanding that it is a representation of God's heart to us, a heart that keeps on loving, a heart that never quits, a heart that believes and helps and heals. By the way, this heart, I believe, God has placed in every woman, not just every mother or grandmother. There are teen girls in this congregation who may become a mother one day. There are women in this congregation who have never borne their own children, but who have this heart of love and compassion and help and healing and blessing to everyone they meet. So we want to honor all women today. Would everybody stand, please? Everybody stand. I've got a word I want to pray over you, some scripture I want to bless you with. So if every woman, 13 and up, every woman, would you come down here and stand around this altar? Every woman, 13 and up, I want to bless you. I want to pray over you. I want to speak the word of God into your life. Now, a little later, we've got a gift for all of you wonderful women. You'll leave with a gift that Pastor Valerie is going to share with you, but I want to give you a pastoral gift, all right? A prophetic gift that I'm praying over every heart here today. Two scriptures. Psalm 31, 24. All you who hope in the Lord... Be strong and courageous, and he will strengthen your heart. Put your hand over your heart, women. All you who hope in the Lord, be strong and courageous. He will strengthen your heart. A woman's heart is so beautiful, so soft, but that's why it can be broken. That's why it can hurt so bad. Keep your hand on your heart. All you who hope in the Lord, be strong and courageous. And he will strengthen. He will. He will. Yes, He will. He will strengthen your heart. Because we can look to our kids to strengthen our hearts and Sometimes they do. Sometimes they make our hearts so proud they bust out of our chest. Sometimes they make our hearts explode with joy and pride, and, and we want to post on Instagram everything that they do, and it's just like, and other times, not so much. A husband may be, maybe not. A friend may strengthen your heart, or they might discourage you. But my God in heaven will always strengthen your heart. So we focus on him for a few moments right now. We say, Lord, strengthen my heart. I bring it to you, Lord. I bring to you this woman's heart. I bring to you this feminine heart. I bring to you, Lord, this, with all of its wounds and, and, and tears and shatteredness, Lord. I, I bring you this heart. You strengthen my heart, Lord. You're strengthening it right now. You're bringing me 
hope and courage and strength. One more scripture. Don't put it up yet. What about what about if we know our heart's not right? You know that you can't, you cannot have a question that God hasn't answered. You cannot think of a question that God has not answered. What about if you know your heart has not been just right? What about when I know? Haven't been feeling right, haven't been thinking right, haven't been acting right, my heart's not been right. Listen to what God says to your heart. If our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and He knows all things. Even if you know how your heart has let you or people down or let, let you down and let people down around you, God is greater than your weak heart. Somebody say, yes, Lord. God is greater than your weak heart, your failing heart, your not strong enough heart. God is greater than your letdown and your disappointment, and he knows all things. He knows the burden that you've carried. He knows how you've been wounded. He knows how you've been hurt. He knows how you've been strong when you felt like being weak. God knows all things, and he's greater than your heart. Lift your hand to heaven now. Say, Lord, thank you that you're healing my heart. Thank you that you're making me whole. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's always a day for a new beginning, a fresh start. Now, Lord, I thank you that your anointing is that strength. Your presence is that strength. Your healing power is that strength, Lord. The courage, the hope for tomorrow, Lord, that today is the first day of the rest of my blessing. Today is the first day for the rest of my miracle. I'm going to look back on Mother's Day 2019 and say, God started something fresh in my life. God started something fresh in my spirit. Now, turn around and place your hand on somebody's shoulder, a mother be, or a grandmother or a teenage girl beside you, and just begin to pray one for another. Father, I bless, I bless, I encourage, I strengthen, I speak hope and courage and strength. Strengthen this heart, Lord, with your anointing, with your presence, with your blessing, with the joy of Jesus, the righteousness, the peace, and the joy of the Holy Spirit coming, Lord, to bring your blessing, to bring your anointing, to bring your grace. I thank you for it. I praise you for it, Lord Jesus. All the men said hallelujah. All the guys said yes, Lord. Bless our women, bless our wives, bless our daughters, bless our sisters in Christ, Lord. Strengthen them. Oh, go back and get a hug from somebody. Even if it's a stranger, let them hug you. Say, Lord, bless. Bless this lady. Bless my sister. Bless this mother. Bless this grandmother. Bless this teenage girl, Lord. Bless him with your Holy Spirit. Bless him with your presence and your anointing. Oh, hallelujah. You know what you need, men? You know what you need, women? We need more of the presence of God. Amen? We need more of his word in our lives. We need more of his grace in our lives. We need more of the, the blessing of knowing who he is. Stand with us and let's worship the Lord right now. God, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise.
King, the saints adore, the angels sing, and fall before the throne of grace. To you belongs the highest praise. These sufferings, this passing time, under.
name above. All other names are his, the name above. All other names. That name of which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. We bow this morning, Lord, in worship in humility and adoration and thanksgiving that you have revealed to us just who you are. Flesh and blood have not revealed this to us, Lord, but your Holy Spirit. Thank you for bringing us together today, Lord. Thank you for your anointing. We've already felt touched by in this place. Now thank you for your word that's going to light a fresh fire in our hearts and lives. Speak to us, Holy Spirit, today, and we'll be grateful for it in the name of Jesus. Now, before you're seated, turn to somebody and say, pray for me. I need this message. I need to get this in my spirit, so pray that I, I don't resist it or quench it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. How in the world does a preacher introduce his favorite preacher who happens to be his wife that he's crazy about? How do you do it? Well, I thought about reading through the list that I posted yesterday on Facebook and social media. For Mother's Day, I listed how she was a writer and a baker and a, a, uh, you know, all the, the gifts and the blessings that she is. And, and, of course, she had to say to me privately, overkill. You did too much. You know, she always says that, but it's, it's hard not to do too much when she's too much, anyhow. But instead of going through all the list of accomplishments and the mother and the grandmother she is, I thought I'd just tell you a couple of things about her which helps to explain who she is. Number one, she's not totally, not, not, not to the nth degree to be nasty, but she's a bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> and so that's very interesting that she married me, <laughs> which obviously God put us together because he brings opposites attract, and I'm the frustration in her life because I'm not quite a perfectionist. The other thing I want you to note about, notice about her is that she does everything with her whole heart. You know, the Bible says that. Whatever your hand finds to do, do with all your might. She doesn't do anything halfway. She does everything, whether it's making a cheesecake or cleaning the house. It's like full tilt, head over. She's in it. She's on it. She's doing it with all of her might, with all of her energy. But the most important thing you need to know about this woman is that she does it all for the glory of God. She doesn't want fanfare. She doesn't want applause. She doesn't do it to be seen of men. She does it for God's glory. Would you welcome my beautiful wife, our co-pastor, Valerie Holmes, to minister today? Thank you. Thank you, my love, <laughs> so very much. How awesome it is, is it, that I get to share the word with you. I consider it such a privilege. You know, anytime we speak into somebody's life and we're speaking the actual word of God, it is a high honor and a privilege because we're talking about the holy word of God. Amen. So I'm just so very happy to be here, especially to you, the women of Revive specifically. I need to tell you that uh, you may not know how much you inspire me, encourage me, and motivate me because I know you. I actually know you all pretty well. I've spent time with most of you over coffee or something, and uh, I treasure you deeper and deeper every year, and I'll tell you why. I know what you've been through. I know what you've overcome. I know what's difficult for you, and I know where the enemy has tried to drag you down, so you encourage me. You inspire me. You motivate me to, to want to speak into your life more, to want to prophesy the word of God into your lives. I just love you. I love meeting with you, and I'm here for you to do just that. Almost all of my life is given to women. It's definitely not given to man except him. <laughs> but I just love it. You'll notice today when you walk out, there are two areas to have a photo opportunity. So gather your kids around and your friends or other women and have some fun with the hats and uh, take some pictures. There's a sign there. We were hoping to do it outdoors. We might still be able to if the rain holds off. But um, just have some fun with those hats and things. Yes. Oh, my goodness. There's a model right there. <laughs> That's one of the photo things. And then there is another one as well. 
Um, also, you'll see that there's a gift for you. Our ladies will help you take one of those, and there's going to be a little cupcake because you've got to have some sweets. Amen? Did anybody notice that Mama Julie is in the house? <laughs> there she, oh, yeah, Dennis is here too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dennis, it is Mother's Day. <laughs> we are so, we, we just, you know, we want them to have fun in Arizona, but we hate giving them up every year, don't we? So they're back. She is a mama and a grandma extraordinaire, a great example to set, a huge encourager, and I'm not going to look her way, but I think she's going to make some things for our coffee bar throughout the summer. Just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, your presence is in this house today, and I thank you for it. I thank you for your presence in me, Lord, and I thank you for your presence in the women sitting right out here in front of me. And I praise you for it. Help me to deliver this word of encouragement to them. And may we walk out of this place, dear God, just edified, strengthened, and encouraged to continue serving you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, I have three short messages for you today. And the first one is just a little bit different. As a matter of fact, it goes against everything I just said about you as women. Because every fiber of my being wants to tell you to just never give up. But today I'm going to turn it around a little bit and I'm going to flat out tell you I want you to give up. I want you to seriously give up. I want you to give up. I want you to give it up to God. I want you to give up fear and doubt and uncertainty about the future and unbelief. I, I want you to give up. Give up your disappointments. Give up your past pain. Give up your people problems. Give them up. Give up the need to control absolutely everything. Give up fighting so hard. Give up struggling to serve and to live for God and to, to do the things that you know God has called you to do. Give up your past, your yesterday. Let it go. Give it up. Give it to God. Give up your present this very day. Whatever's going on in your life, give it up. Tomorrow, your future, give it up to God. You know, there's a couple women in the Bible their names are Mary and Martha. And I'd like to say to Martha, Martha, give up your story. Give up your story. Give up always sharing your feelings. Give it up. You know, Mary recognized that Jesus was in the house. But Martha was more concerned about her feelings instead of feeling the presence of God right in the house. He was right there. And today that's what I would say to Martha, Martha, give up telling your story. Everybody already knows it. Surrender it. Give it up to God. That's my message to you this morning. The very first one is to surrender. That's right. I'm, I'm suggesting this morning that absolute, total, throw up your hands, give up. Surrender it all to God. The most memorable the most powerful experiences I've ever had in my life, the times when I have seen the most amazing answers to prayer are times when I did all that I could do and then I just said, I give up. I give it up, Lord. I've done all that I can possibly do, so I give it up. And sure enough, God swoops in and somehow he's his greatest and most powerful then when I am at my most surrendered moment. Now be careful, ladies, not to confuse surrender with weakness and don't confuse it with defeat. Do you know that it might feel like that? It might even look like that. But for you, the believer, the one who's put his hope, her hope and faith in Christ, it is actually the bravest, strongest moment of your life. That's when you are most brave, is when you can stand and say, I give up, I give it all to you, God. Limiting your surrender limits God. It limits what he can do in you, and it limits what he can do through you. You are most powerful when you surrender and give it all to God. Total surrender is that place where you have God's utmost attention. 
that's, it's that place when you are as, as some clay, because you are clay. It's that place that he can mold you and shape you and prepare you um, for and position you for where he's taking you. Position you for what his ultimate purposes and plan are for your life. Surrender is when you're most pliable for his purposes. Here's a couple examples of, of uh, people that have given up. How many saw the movie Breakthrough? It was great. I understand it might have been difficult for some who have lost a loved one, but it was actually a very, very great movie, well done, and certainly gave God the glory that an actual miracle had taken place. And of course, the miracle, the, the most powerful part of the movie is when we saw that mother come and take the seat of her young boy, and she called upon the Holy Spirit, and she said, come, Holy Spirit. And of course, we have the power to speak the word of faith, we have the power to call upon the Holy Spirit to come at our moment of crisis, amen? But really the most powerful part in the movie to me was when the Holy Spirit began to deal with this mother and show her, you're not really behaving very nicely. You're not really being like Christ. And she had had power, and she had had authority, and she had exerted it, but she wasn't really living right in front of the people around her. She wasn't acting like she had Christ in her. The most powerful part of the movie to me is when she allowed herself to hear the voice of the Spirit and she made her way up to the top of the hospital and went outdoors and she stood on the roof of the hospital <clears throat> and she put both hands up and she said, I surrender. I give you my son. I'm no longer commanding and demanding that you heal him, but I give you him. Do what you want, Lord. And of course, the boy woke from a coma and was healed. And to me, of course, we've got to hold on and speak the word of faith over our children and over our situations. But God seems to rush in and move when we give it up. Yeah. I give it up. I surrender to you. And he says, now, now watch what I'll do. Watch what I will do. The second, the, the, the um, Mo, here's my favorite def definition of, um, of both faith and surrender. I say this frequently, I quote it, I speak it. It says, surrender in faith to me is this, the leaning of my entire personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, his wisdom, and his goodness. Yes. That's surrender. Amen. I'm going to lean my entire personality, my entire being, every part of who I am. Well, that's the first message, ladies. Give up, but don't give in. Don't ever give in. Somewhere inside of you, you have received truth. You have received hope, peace, power, some point in your walk with God, you have received some truth, truth that has been revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. Don't ever give in. Don't ever give it away. Hang on and cling to the words that God has given you. Cling to the promise that he's planted deep within your heart. All of you have hopes. All of you have dreams. You know that they're given to you by God because you keep hanging on to them in the most difficult of times. You never quite toss them away. And it tells you that there's something supernatural to this hope that, that I have, this dream that just maybe God could do that for me. Just maybe God could do that for my family. You've been given something, a dream that's planted deep in your heart, and you know that he will bring them to pass. So I'm, I'm telling you to give up and surrender to God, but don't give in to losing those things that God has been to you. Cling to them, the hope, the word, the promise, the dream, the things that God has done for you. You've had an experience with God. There's been times when you have felt the Holy Spirit speak to you about today, 
about tomorrow, about your situation or your circumstances or your family. Cling to those things. Hang on to them. Don't let them go. God wants to bring them to full fruition in your life. He wants to bring them to pass. There's a couple great examples in the Bible of, of two people who gave up, but they never gave in. One was Joseph and one was Jochebed. Now, Joseph had a dream, but Jochebed had a baby. And Joseph knew that dream was from God. But oh my, in those middle years, in that middle season, you'd have, you'd have wondered. You'd have wondered because he was betrayed and betrayed by family and deeply disappointed and thrown in a prison cell and beaten. And you would have thought, where's the dream? But Joseph hung on. He didn't give in. He had a dream, and he knew that dream was from God. And the end of the story was glorious. You know that it was um, Joseph that ruled all of Egypt. His dream that came to pass was greater by far than the dream God had given in a, in a field that day. And Jochebed had a baby. And when everything threatened the life of this baby, when the army was coming to kill her baby, she put that baby in a basket, she waterproofed it, and she surrendered it. She pushed it down the river. She must have thought this silly old basket could tip over in two seconds, and everything possible threatened. But God had given her that baby. The Bible says when she looked at him, he was beautiful. She saw he's beautiful. She said, I'm not giving this baby to this army. He's beautiful. She did everything that she could physically do to save her baby, and then she surrendered him. And of course, the end of the story is that God allowed the baby to come right back to Jochebed for a season. And then Moses led the children of Israel into the promised land. What a glorious, glorious promise he had given her. And God has given you promises. God has given you seeds of hope. I don't know if they're big or I don't know if they're small. I know that doesn't matter to God. But I know that if you don't give in, and if you remember, this was given to me by God. I have a dream given from God. I have a promise from God, and you don't give in. I promise you in the middle season, when it's difficult and dark and hard, that God will bring it to pass if you don't give in. My baby girl, Telly, had a baby. I cannot even tell you how wonderful it was to be with her this week. But um, what a difficult time it was to watch Telly these past four years as, she, um, as her dream wasn't coming to pass. Now, our, our baby girl knew that God wanted to bless her with a child, but it just wasn't happening. And it was about four years, and that may not feel so bad to us ladies who are older, We've been through some long things, but this young girl in her 20s, it was an eternity for her. And you know, as a parent, I had to watch her struggle through this almost four years. And, um, but I know that she refused to let go of what she believed God had promised her. I watched her hang on. I watched her cling when they had pretty much given her very little hope. I watched her to cling to truth, she had been taught, truth she had experienced, and truth that she knew. She knew beyond a shadow of a doubt. And when it was hard and when it was dark, she had to, all by herself, cling to those things. Truth she'd been taught down through the years, truth she experienced, and truth she knew. Here's a little side note, um, ladies, just off my message just a little bit. I was pretty much Telly's coach at that time for those years in her life. I was that voice, that mother voice, that caring voice, that prophetic voice, that voice that told her to hold on and keep believing God. So you can say that I was Telly's coach. And I just want to tell you all this because I work with a lot of women and I talk with a lot of women and you're amazing. And I watch you coach your kids. I even watch you coach one another. And I want to encourage you to be the coach to yourself 
that you are to your kids. Be the coach to you, to yourself, that you are to your kids. Because you see such great things in your kids. You see purity, perfection. You see innocence. You see strength in that baby girl. You see depth in her. You see the Holy Spirit. You see abilities and talents and greatness. You see righteousness in your kids. You would tell them such amazing things that there is nothing that they can't do, that it is unlimited, that they're smart, they're kind, they're lovely, they're beautiful. I want you to be the coach to yourself that you would be to your kids. Stand in front of a mirror and say, and tell yourself those things. I am loved. There's nothing I can't do. I'm smart. I can hear the voice of God. I can obey God. Be the coach to yourself that you are to your children. And your children will imitate you. I promise you. Secondly, after you've been the coach to yourself, Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you those very same things. He's your coach. He is the one that believes in you and sees your greatness and then repeat the things that he says. At one point in Chantel's um, labor this past week, and I know I haven't shared the details, I'll probably get there, but at one point in this, at her labor, she said, Mom, and I knew she felt you know, with that first baby, she wasn't sure if she really wanted to get that epidural. And uh, every first mother does that. <laughs> but she said, Mom, I had to get the epidural. She said, I, I just couldn't do it. She said, I know I would have passed out. I just know I would have passed out. Now, I'm personally glad that she got the relief. I encouraged her to have it. There's help out there. Take it. Ladies, in that middle season, there's help out there. Take it. <laughs> but I know, and you know, that she still would have given birth to that baby. We know that she would have done it. She thinks she couldn't have done it, but we know she would have. We know that it probably would have been a lot more difficult than without the epidural, but we know that she would have birthed that promise, that dream, that baby. And that's how God sees you. In the middle season, you say, I can't do it. And God says, you know what? Find some comfort. Get as much relief as you can possible with loved ones around you and the great things that this world has to offer us in comfort. But he knows you can do it. He knows you can do it. He knows you can birth that dream, that promise. Um, here's a little key to holding on to your dream in that middle time. It's a powerful verse. It says, Psalm 131 says, Lord, help me not to concern myself with matters that are too great for me. Amen. Help me to stay focused, God, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on what you've given me to do as a, as a Christian. And help me not to concern myself on matters that are too great for me. Stay focused on this, not giving up. I mean, giving up. <laughs> Stay focused on giving up and not giving in. Hold on to the promise. So we'll give up. We'll not give in. But ladies, let's give out. Let's give out. Joyce, Joseph made a couple really um, key choices while he was in that middle time before the promise came to pass. He chose to serve the other prisoners. This became a huge key to Joseph's deliverance and a huge key to his promotion, which was huge and great promotion. He chose to not just sit around at that time in prison and feel sorry for himself and tell the story. He chose to hang on to the dream that God had given him and in the meantime, begin to give out, begin to serve. Joseph's dream came to pass when he began to get interested in the dreams of other people. When he began to get involved in the dreams of the prisoners and dreams of the guards and the other people, he interpreted dreams, then Joseph's dream then came to pass. 
So my encouragement to you this morning is to find that place where you can give out. Where are you giving out? We give up, we're holding on and we don't give in. But where are you giving out? Where are you serving the Lord? Where are you giving to others, even in your own difficulty and hard time? This morning, as you leave, we're going to give you a plant. It's called a succulent, and I think you'll really like it. These are pretty amazing. This one here is awesome. But these plants actually thrive in a dry climate. They're almost a little bit like a cactus. They store water, and they tend to multiply in abundance. I don't know if you can see it, but this one has a whole bunch of babies coming down here. They're quite an amazing little plant. And a couple of weeks ago, I was in Tulsa with my girls, and uh, we went out onto the back patio of Rachel's house, and Rachel had these succulents in these two pots that were absolutely unbelievable. They're overflowing, they're gorgeous. She said there were so many of them, she had to divide them and put them in another pot. They're all over the place, and they were like picturesque. They were absolutely amazing. And Angela and Destiny and I stood around and were like, oh my word, like those succulents are absolutely gorgeous. And I said, what in the world are you doing? You see, Chantel started the succulents. She had them growing in her garden. And so she, we took a bunch of them, and I had four tin cans, and I divided them, and I put a little bit in each tin can, and I gave one to Angela, Telly, and myself, and Rachel, so four of them. So we all went home with a little tin can, just like this. Well, that is Destiny's. <laughs> and this one is Rachel's. And this one, the, the, the larger succulents. And it, it doesn't, this doesn't even begin to do it justice. This was divided into two pots and they were huge. And we said, what in the world is, like why is it that Angela's pot or can looks just like that, my can looks just like that, and Destiny's can looks, but Angela's looks like that. Rachel, I got to get them all confused. And uh, we stood there and stood there and stood there at her patio and we went, drainage. It's all about the drainage. She had a hole in the bottom of both of her pots. She left them out, all four of us, because you're, you're allowed, you're supposed to do this with succulents. They went through the wind, the snow, the hail, the water. They're, they're, they're out all year long. And Rachel left them there on the patio table all winter long. Any climate, she says, I never touch them, I never do a thing, never tend to them. But it was the drainage. You see, not only did she replant them and put them in another pot, but they had drainage. They were giving out. And in your driest, deserty, darkest places, you've got to give out. Yeah. There's got to be some drainage of what God is doing for you. Whatever you're taking in and taking in. You see, we tend to kind of gorge on the things of God when we have a need. It's like we pack it in and I need more, I need more because I'm because I'm believing God for something and I'm, I'm weak right now and I, and I got to make this promise come to pass so I'm going to gorge on it and we need to give out. We need to take it in but we need to give out. And, and that's my challenge to you this morning is to give out. Replant yourself if you have to. If you're not involved in any way of serving the Lord or serving others then replant yourself. Put yourself in a spot where you can. And um, no matter what comes against you, whatever kind of weather or season in your life, be replanted and then allow yourself to give out. Serve the Lord. Serve the body of Christ. Um, this is the message that I would give to my girls. Here they are. I call them my fab five. <laughs> These are my fabulous five. And it's Angela, Rachel, Chantel, and Destiny, and Ripley five of them. And I would say to these girls, I hope I can be the coach in their life. I hope I can be that voice of prophecy into their lives and say, girls, always give up. Always don't ever give in. Hang on to the word that God has given you. But girls, you've got to give out. If you want to flourish, if you want to prosper, if you want to multiply, you've got to give out. Succulents are also called hens and chicks. Have you ever heard of that? 
It's because they multiply. I suppose this is the hen, and these are all the little chicks. You know, girls were supposed to multiply. You know that, right? <laughs> and I'm not talking about just having babies. <laughs> but believers, we're supposed to multiply. We're supposed to actually make disciples. And giving out is exactly that. You are either strengthening another disciple so that they can give out, or you're actually making a disciple. It is the most awesome thing to know that your babies are having babies. And it's the same way with God. When his disciples, his babies, his children are having children and they're making disciples, it thrills the heart of God. And it's our challenge. It's what we are called to do as believers. Concern yourself with what concerns God, and God will concern himself with what concerns you. Jesus said this. He said, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God. My nourishment comes from giving out, from serving. And your nourishment, your strength, your ability to hold on to the things God has given you comes from doing the will of God, from giving out. In closing, my challenge this morning is just that. You can all stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. But I want to challenge you, ladies, every day of your life, every day, whether it's the start of the day or whatever you choose, I want you to give up. Take time to surrender. Give up to God. Think of those things that you just need to give up and say, Lord, I've done all that I could do to the best of my ability. I give it now to you. And then sometime throughout the day, don't give in. Consciously say, Lord, I'm holding on to the promises that you gave me. I'm holding on to the hope, the peace. I'm not letting go. I'm going to hold on. And the things you've done for other women, other families, the things that you've spoken to me about, the truth that you've been revealing to me, I'm not going to give them in. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to hold on. And every day, give out. Every day. Start your day giving up. Don't give in and then give out. I want to pray for you this morning. And then I want you to sing this last song with this band. Because you are chosen. You've been chosen of God. He has placed his hand upon you. He has his hand upon your families. He knows every detail of your life. He has a purpose. He has a plan. He's got a word for you. He's got truth revealed. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for every person in this house, Lord, man or woman. I thank you, God, that you have truly chosen them. You've called them, Lord. You've called them to yourself to come and serve you and live for you. You've called them, Lord, to break every chain or bondage in their life or anything that would hold them back. And you've given them dreams, God, and you've given them desires with the full and complete intention of bringing them to pass and having it go from generation to generation to generation. So, Lord, I just pray a blessing upon the hearts of every woman in this house. And I just pray, God, that they would be able to surrender it to you, become concerned with the things that you're concerned about, and serve you, Lord, by giving out. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, amen, amen. Sing this song, be encouraged, and I want to see you when, I, when I'm out there. God bless you.